Hey folks, um, Brother Rob with you here again. So I just want to talk about briefly, uh, you know, I'm kind of hitting on, and I don't mean to do so, um, I don't mean to belabor it, but, or overdo it. But I wanted to briefly touch on for a few minutes uh, <coughs> biblical correction again. Now, <clears throat> I've said it online, I'll say it again. If I am in the wrong, and I can see it, and it's been pointed out to me, I'll be the first one to admit it. Now, where I want to make a very big distinction about this is to the degree that I will, or the expectation that's placed on me. For example, let's just say hypothetically that <clears throat> I said an inappropriate comment regarding uh, a woman's uh, attire, or dress, or lack thereof. And a brother or sister called me on it, and I said, okay, you're right. Okay, you're right. You know what? I said it. I shouldn't have said it. All right, I, I can see, like, all right, no problem. Hypothetically, because I don't make those kind of comments, but just for the sake of argument. Um, and then they say, okay, someone said, I know I could have mentioned names, um, but it's in, my, in, an e in, e in an email back and forth that I said, I will, um, I can accept when I'm wrong. And then it said something, he, the person said something to the effect of, Rob online. I'm, I'll admit that I'm wrong. And then Rob in, in, in reality. Keep dreaming. And then the context of that was I, he said that um, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit that I'm wrong, but I'm not but he, but he wanted a source for something that we were talking about. And I said that I'm not here to meet your expectations. That's the context of what was going on. So it's not that I wasn't willing to receive correction because I even told that person I admit that I have times of, of um, giving in to uh, anger and frustration, but that's not all of it, because this person was, first of all, taking me widely out of context. Secondly, not even acknowledging that, the, that he, what uh, they were saying was only a part of the picture. And secondly, applying the extremely unbalanced and um, unequivocally uh, unfair skill to the assessment that 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 he that that person was making of and over me. So secondly, I have a problem with um, unfair and disproportionate skills in terms of critique. Now, you don't have to agree. You don't have to agree with me about that or anything for that matter. And I simply don't care. And when I say I don't care, I don't say that I don't care. I'm not. I don't care about critique or constructive criticism. Or about you or your well-being. I'm just saying I don't care if you disagree with me, and I want to make that clear. So because it's not me saying I don't care about whether or not you agree with me is not the same thing about me saying I don't care about you or anything you have to say or think. That's simply not cr true. So don't falsely make ac accusations about me or oh, about it. Okay. Now, next point I want to say is if I block you. <clears throat> It's not personal against you. A lot of times I block, because I sit on, on Twitter and I'll say it again. First of all, because I, this conversation is um, fruitless um, dialogue. It's not going anywhere What and we don't agree. So I don't see the point of going on. And Apostle Paul talks about, you know, don't get caught up in um, arguments and just, you know, arguments and so on, to paraphrase. Um, and so I, I want to avoid that because I don't want to get get caught up in useless banter, um, whether it's in an email discourse, a th uh, whether it's in a Twitter thread, or whether it's on, on, a, on a YouTube comment section. I don't want to get in involved in a use useless um, conversation in terms of its fruitlessness. I've been there before, and I don't. there's just no wisdom in it. And because it's not wise, I want to avoid unwise decisions in thinking. Now, some conversations may be, be bear um, hashing it out, even if it's tough and challenging, and I've been through many of those conversations, both in my online discourse and real life situations, and, um, you know, they, they shape you, right? So, um, obviously, I'm not a perfect man. I'm in a much better place than I am now than I have been in the past in every way, shape, 
form, but I'm still a work in progress, and I'm by no means a perfect person, nor have I ever claimed to be, nor ever will claim to be. I'm far from perfect, but I am righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, as the Lord calls me to. I am a righteous man in, in, in the sense that I have this Holy Spirit of God living within me, and I am able to discern <clears throat> with his wisdom and discretion about that which is wise and foolish, that which is good, and that which is, is the, that which I should avoid. I can I can discern the spirit of Antichrist in in word pat and speech patterns, and in word patterns, speech patterns, conduct patterns, all three of it. I can discern a spirit, whether it's of God or the or it's of Christ or the Antichrist, just by the way people talk. I can't. And again, that's not me bragging. That's the spirit of God enlightening me and bringing that wisdom into alignment so that I can see it for the thing it is. Either it's of him or it's not of him. And uh, again, that's not a boast of me. That's a boast of the work of the Lord within me, okay? So make that clear too. <clears throat> okay, next point I want to, next thing I want to point out is that it kind of, kind of, uh, I say circling back to the thing I was talking about at the beginning of this video, which is <clears throat> there is a distinction between me being uh, receiving correction and me meeting the expectation of your, me meeting the expectation of my receptivity of your correction. Let me explain that. Okay, for example, remember I made the hypothetical situation where if I made an inappropriate comment about a woman's uh, dress or conduct or maybe both, um, and I was called on it, um, and held accountable for it, and then I said, oh, okay, you're right, you're right, I did that, should have done that, sorry, try to avoid that going forward. Now, if you say, and if that, say that happens, I, hypothetically speaking, because I don't do this in, real, in reality, make an inappropriate comment about a woman's dress or uh, conduct or both, and I'm called on it, I acknowledge it, repent of it, and just say, okay, I'll try to do that no more. And then you say something like, well, what about, you know, what about the thing you did like two weeks ago when you did, uh, I don't know. Just, I'm thinking hypothetically on the flyer. So, what if I said, okay, what about two weeks ago when you were a little bit angry at, at your, at a, uh, you know, in line and you were a little bit brash in your discourse? Well, first of all, what does me being brash in my discourse with someone two weeks ago have to do with me making a comment about uh, a woman's uh, dress or conduct or either? And it doesn't, right? And again, just hypothetical, but I'm just saying people have had a tendency, do have a tendency to make points to try to connect things that have no correlation or connection to each other whatsoever. So if you're going to do that, then I'm going to separate that. Okay, okay you now you're going overboard. Okay, the other, th the other the, another thing I want to point out is that I'm not going to, uh, there's, there, there's a, e it's very easy for proper correction to slide in uh, self-righteous moral grandstanding and, and self-righteous hypocrisy. And I, and I have seen that and continue to see that to this day. Now, what I mean by that is, again, okay, let's say um, you point out to me that, that because I've already ever used this example, that I said something inappropriate about a way, the way a woman dresses, conducts herself, or conducts her, her in terms of her dress or conduct or both. I acknowledge it. But then you say something, okay, Rob, now you need to, like, repent, go to the church, and, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm being overly emphatic for a point, but let's just say you're just trying to, like, pound me into the pavement, so to speak. And um, when you, if that, if and when that kind of thing happens, then you're moved from biblical correction to a place of um, self-righteous hypocrisy and moral grandstanding. And that's the kind of conduct that I'm seeing from believers, and in the con and sort of, the, and it's in the context of, what I've been talking about for in, in, in the duration and entirety of this video. So if you're going to correct me and do it biblically and then move from a place of proper biblical correction to a place of, of self-righteous hypocrisy and moral grandstanding, then again, that's where I'm going to have to um, part ways with you in terms of it being, have gone from a, a, a good correction to something that isn't of God at all. And I have the wisdom and the sermon of God again, again, it's his gift to me. Not, not. A, I'm boasting on on God and for God, not myself, because I have no righteousness of myself. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus 
through the spirit of redemption and the spirit of God himself who, who lives and moves in me and causes me to do his will as I move about, go about my life, which of course, again, doesn't mean I'm perfect by any stretch of imagination because I'm not, because I still have free agency as, as all of us do. Um, but I am trying to work on my, the, my the deficiencies that I do have. And, you know, like I said in Twitter, I'll say again, you know, I can, I'll be the first to admit that I can be a smart ass, I can be sarcastic, I can be rough around the edges, and I can be brutally honest. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to drop the sarcasm. I'm trying to drop the uh, being a smart ass. Um, and I'm trying to work at just really approaching things a lot in life and a loving cordial. And, you know, and I recognize that the, there's thought patterns that obviously come into play when I'm being a smart ass or sarcastic or maybe I'm being a, a tad bit or entirely condescending or mostly condescending. Um, and I've definitely, unfortunately, you know, resolved and resorted to that in my YouTube comment section a lot of times. And, you know, it happens on occasion on Twitter too. But, you know, I, I do see it for what it is. I recognize it for what it, what it, what it has been. And I've, I've quite a few, I can't say quite a few times, but I could say there has been a number of times where I've publicly apologized on Twitter when I've recognized that pattern of behavior for what it was and exposed myself for it that very thing and just laid it made myself bare and then but i've also done that in person i do that in person a lot too a lot I don't. when it happens when it happens that i'm in error in per error in sin or both in my in my personal life and it's brought to my attention as it usually does because it, it's obvious when it happens that i acknowledge it i repent of it put it under the blood move on now i know that I have a propensity to move on a lot faster than other people do once I have repented. But once I have repented, and I've done it honestly, forthrightly, in the spirit of love, humility, that God expects of me and calls me, calls out of me, and I have done that, and to do do that, then I just, I don't um, continue to engage it. Now, I might continue to, I can't, I'll acknowledge that it happened if it's brought to me again, but I'm not going to give it any uh authority as a as as a means of uh, speaking is as a, something that's gonna has the power to speak into my life because that's under the blood of jesus and i'm moving forward now you can stay in the past and and continue to bring my crap that get the crap from my past into my present or future but i won't let it and i don't have and i have the moral authority of the lord himself to 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 refute that nonsense. If you're going to bring a case against me about something I've done in my past, and I've and I have acknowledged it for what it was and repented for it, then no, I'm not going to I'm not going to stand for that. That's nonsense. And Jesus even won't stand for. It. That's why should I, as his follower? It's nonsense. Okay. So, and then to bring this to a conclusion, what I just want to say is I really do. You know. <laughs> When it comes to a biblical correction, Jesus laid it out for us very clearly in Matthew 18, 15, and 19. First, bring it to case one-to-one. -one. So if you're going to correct me, probably you should probably be doing it. Like if, uh, if it's going to be done electronically, you direct message on Twitter, my Gmail account there, or if, you know, none of you have my Facebook, but that's okay. Um, if it's an, a Facebook thing, you know, tell, me, tell me to tell, put it, message me. Not publicly, right? Because that's the other thing is when you do, when you when you bring when you bring accusation and correction in a in the public forum in the public purview, then you're you've actually opened yourself up to correction as well, okay? Because now it's not just me who's seeing it, but it's me and you and everyone else on that forum who's gonna see it. It's gonna be have the the right to weigh on it because now is now you've put forth you thrown down the gauntlet so to speak on a public forum which we should avoid void now some things there are things that have to be hashed out in public and sometimes i'll hash it out in public because um i care about my reputation as a man and as a follower of christ and i'm just not gonna let i'm not gonna let anybody tarnish it just because because that's foolish I'm not going to stand by and let someone throw me under the under the mat, so to speak, and drag my feet through the, the fire just because they felt to do it. That's nonsense. I have not too much self-respect to let you or anyone pull that crap on me. So don't think I'm going to let that stand, because I won't. Um, 
And you know, I, there was a, there was a there was a person on Twitter that me and another brother had dished out, and she just wouldn't listen no matter what was said, wouldn't accept any correction no matter what was brought to her attention, even though it was clear as day to both of us, and more than likely anyone else who had, had seen that thread, and she wouldn't refuse to listen to it because she, it was coming from a spirit of a antichrist. It was coming from a spirit of moral grandstanding, self-righteous hypocrisy, and the inability to receive the correction was just bait and switch, bullshit projection, and nothing but childish, immature antics, and it's, it's rank immaturity. And I stand by everything of what I just said. It's rank immaturity not to accept correction what is brought to your face, and it's right. It's moronically stupid. Okay, now I'm getting a little intense. <sighs> but yeah, it does bother me when things are brought to the attention of people that say obviously true and they just stupidly and stubbornly and foolishly um, refuse to acknowledge and accept it as it is. And if I was a pastor, I wouldn't stand for that either. Um, so yeah, so and I have pastoral ministry experience too. And, uh, and of course, I have personal experience. So I try to to bring both of those worlds together when I address uh, any any issue um, concerning um, the things of life or the things that um, we can we glean from this page of scriptures as a way to in which to inform our lives about how we should be living them in before God before the body of Christ and of course the world around us and, and try to bring that to a cohesive logical and uh, Christ-like honorable way both to the Lord um, to within myself and of course to you the body of christ and if you're not a christian to the world meaning everyone who's not a christian who's living in this anti-christ um satanic uh world we live in um for the most part uh, this world is duped and been blinded by satan and anyone who's a christian who has eyes to see and ears to hear would know that okay so that's all i want to say i've said what i wanted to say and i've and I'm comfortable that the things I wanted to say were okay. Actually, wait, I'm gonna just go, go through the the model of uh, discipline personally and publicly, both um, from a pastoral part perspective and a personal perspective because they uh, cohere, they go together. Okay, so again, Matthew eight fifteen to nineteen, Jesus lays out very clearly and simply for all of us how to go about di tr discipline within the tr body of Christ. Now, again, you can apply these same principles. In any other real life, whether it's vocational, whether it's ministry, whether it's personal between you and a friend, you and you and a romantic, your, your partner, whether it's your boyfriend, um, girlfriend, whether that's your fiance or spouse, whether that's your friends, whatever, it's a political. Okay, so again, the biblical model of correction is first and foremost, as it's been presented to us by Christ himself in Matthew 18, 15, 19, one on one. Bring the matter to the brother or sister in question that you wanted that that, that who, with whom it needs to be or it should be addressed with one on one. Okay, if it's true, of course. <laughs> okay, that's obviously um, the starting point, but sometimes the obvious needs to be stated. Okay, one on one. Now, if that brother or sister is in the wrong about the thing that you've addressed with the, the him or her about. And they still refuse to acknowledge it. Then you bring it. Do you bring other one or two other people? Maybe maybe three or four. Whatever. Doesn't, the numbers don't really matter. It's as long as it's it's not just you anymore. So it's you and some other people that you can that you both trust that you bring into the situation, inform them what's going on, and then if that if they still refuse if that person still refuses to acknowledge what's going on about the thing that's been addressed, even if you and, uh, and other people have agreed upon it, then you got to bring it to the church body itself, which means now it's just not you and a few other people. Now it's you and the entirety of your local church, leadership, congregants, all of them. <laughs> and if they still refuse to listen to even the correction of the church, then you kick them out, meaning you excommunicate them. And the reason for that is twofold. First, again, to uh, safeguard the body of local church, meaning we don't want to let that person, because they foolishly reject even the counseling, the wise counsel and correction of the church, to influence other members in the church. Secondly, because they've foolishly were, um, chosen to ignore the wise correction of the body of 
Christ within the local church, they need to be dealt with one-on-one -on -one with God, meaning they're so incredibly foolish and stubborn not to even accept the correction within the body of Christ in the local church for, for what it is, which is extremely and ignorantly foolish. But So now they because they, they don't want to listen, they refuse to listen, there's obviously a wisdom issue, and who knows, maybe obviously more likely a few other things going on in that regard. But they need to be dealt with by God, and God alone. Okay? So this is a pattern of correction. So it has to be done within the model that Christ sets for us in uh, Matthew 18, 15, and 19. Now, if your correction exceeds the model, then it's no longer Christ-like. Because Christ gave us the model. So if you exceed the model, it's not Christ-like. So if, you're, if, if your correction goes above what Christ has commanded there, then you're no longer in the Christ-like uh, purview of it. No, there may be wisdom, Christ-like wisdom that, you're, that you, you've applied to the situation that correlates to what the, 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 the biblical command that Christ laid out for us. But if your correction exceeds what Christ lays out for us in Matthew 18, 15, 19, and it doesn't correlate to wisdom of the wisdom of God, then of course, now you've gone against the wisdom of God. And what does the Bible say about the wisdom of the world? It's foolish, demonic. The wisdom of the world is foolish and demonic. So you can't operate within the, world, the wisdom of the world and be anything but foolish and operating from a spirit of, of a demonic spirit. Now, which is, again, is not to say you are demonic, but you're arguing and bringing a case against me or whoever else from that system. you got to see it for what it is, and it takes discernment and wisdom for that, no, no doubt, and that takes time to hone as well. But that's... Uh, a video for another day. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. Love you. I bless you. Peace out, Brother Rob.